Well, it wasn't a contest, but I really do want to give kudos to everyone for wearing Easter bonnets and making it festive and joyful. You'll be glad to know that I'm going to take mine off so that you can possibly take me seriously. Um, but I love that Glade is so willing to be full of creativity and joy. Um, and maybe we'll put them back on for, our, for the time with children. But I'm going to take mine off for now. Also because the hat's too small and it squeezes my brain. Friends, it is a glorious day. It is a day that God has created for us for worship. And it is the highest of holy days for it is Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So let us take a moment now to breathe in the resurrection to become aware of the living God within us. Risen Lord, could it be true? Just yesterday, we were shrouded in darkness and our hearts were in despair for we had lost you. And now the stone is rolled away. Could it be true? Are you risen? We come this morning yearning, hoping that it is true. And we come this morning saying, yes, it is true. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And we come to live into resurrection truth. Amen.
Amen. What beautiful music. Nancy, it was gorgeous and it was also very quiet. At least it was on my computer. So if you can move the mic closer, that would be great. And now hear these words from scripture. Listen for the word of God to us today. Early in the morning of the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Peter and the other disciple left to go to the tomb. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. can call us back to life again, fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come again like wheat arising Hear this reading from John chapter 10. Peter and the other disciple were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and was the first to arrive at the tomb. Bending down to take a look, he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Following him, Simon Peter entered the tomb and saw the linen cloth lying there. He also saw the face cloth that had been on Jesus's head. It wasn't with the other clothes, but was folded up in its own place. Then the other disciple, the one who arrived at the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They didn't yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying.
Alleluia. Now I invite the kids to come forward so you can see the screen and you should turn your microphones on. And Nancy, while we're doing that, you're still really quiet and I, I don't have, I don't think I have anything on my computer that I, anything else I can click to make it louder. If anybody has a suggestion from out there, I would love to hear it because it's such a shame on Easter Sunday to have it be so quiet. I think Nancy, if you can just make sure your microphone is plugged in to your either the computer or your phone. That's all I know. Well, good morning, friends. I'm going to put my hat back on because you guys still have your hats on. I loved making my hat. It was so fun. So you guys look at your screens. Can you see everybody? Can you see? Who do you think has the very best hat? Who do you think? Um, that one who has the lion hat. Oh, you. David, Mike did pretty good. David is the best hat by far. David is the best <laughs> by far. <laughs> David's is a pretty good one. But I don't know. Look at Ben. I see an Easter basket on a head. No, this is just my. Um, no, I'm it. Ben and James, look. You wanted to win. <laughs> you guys, that looks so good. Oh, and look at Eden's. Why you Yours is looking pretty good, Eden. Well, I'm just proud of everybody. Oh, and look, Wesley's putting his hat back on. He's a minion, an Easter minion. I love it. You guys are so awesome. Thanks for being goofy with me. I love it. Well, you know, I had to get up really early this morning because... Some of us went over and gathered at Glade for an Easter sunrise service, so I didn't get a chance to eat breakfast yet. So I thought while we were talking, I would go ahead and get my breakfast ready. So right after worship, I could run downstairs and cook it. Is that all right with y'all? Yeah? Is it okay if I do a little preparation while I talk? Is that all right? Okay. Because it just so happens that I have some eggs. See my eggs? She has no chance. My basket. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to get my eggs ready. You know how you take an egg and what do you do? What do you have to do? If you're going to have scrambled eggs for breakfast, what do you do with your egg? With your eyes. With yeah. Scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs. You got it, right? So you have to crack it, right? So I'm going to crack it. Watch me. I'm probably going to make a giant mess. Ready? All right. So I'm cracking my egg. Ready? Here it goes. Bloop. All right. I would recommend that you make a cake with that. Ooh. A very good cake. That sounds, I could just skip breakfast and I could just make a cake, couldn't I? That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. So I've cracked one egg. Let me see. I gotta wipe my hands off because I got egg all over my hands. All right, now. So I've got this egg and I'm gonna be able to scramble it up, pour it in my pan, fry it up, right? But I like at least two eggs when I have eggs for breakfast. So I'm gonna crack this one. You ready? All right, here we go. Wait. What? What is that? Ew. What? Wait, that I can't scramble that. What is that? All right. Apparently that was a bad egg. Let's try another one. All right. A rotten egg. It was a rotten egg. It might have been. It doesn't smell like a rotten egg though. No. All right. Let me try this. That was one. probably the trick egg that you bought 
It's kind of tough. Cat Oreos inside. It's not cracking very well. Wait a second. Oreos inside, Pastor Susan. Look at that. <laughs> what in the world? All right, I'm just going to go ahead and peel this one. Better eggs. I'm going to peel this one and see what in the world. What is going on? All right, come on. There's cake in them. Some more peeling. So, what? I'm gonna smell it. Let me see what it smells like. Ooh, y'all. You know what it smells like? It smells like chocolate cake. Mm. It's cake. In my egg. How did chocolate cake get mm. in my egg? Maybe you hollowed it out. Do you double dog dare me to taste it? <laughs> Should I taste it? You think? All right. I dare you. I'm, a, I'm gonna take a teeny <laughs> tiny bite. <laughs> uh, it is! It's chocolate cake, you guys! <laughs> oh! Chocolate cake. That is so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. Emmett's Emmett must know because he already knew I should make it in his chocolate cake. There you go. Oh. Oh, that is so good. Now I don't even have to go. <laughs> Sometimes things are surprising, aren't they? We think we're going to get one thing. Uh -huh. Whoop. I'm going to pour egg out. We think we're going to get eggs. And we get chocolate cake. I think maybe that's sort of what happened to Mary that morning when she went to the tomb. When she went to the tomb that morning, what was she expecting to find? Jesus. She was expecting to find Jesus' body, wasn't she? Because she thought he was dead. So she thought she was going to go and try to figure out how to roll that big old stone away by herself. And she was all ready for that. And then she got there. And what did she find? What did she find at the two? Nobody. That's right. And that was kind of like finding chocolate cake in your egg. It was so weird. She didn't know what to do. She, she was scared and she was, she was confused and she was maybe a little bit excited because Jesus wasn't there. So maybe what he had said before that he would rise from the dead was true. And maybe she would get to see him again. And so then she was so excited and she recognized him. And he said, go and tell all of my disciples, go tell everyone that I am risen from the dead. And she did. And that is what we are here celebrating today, that Jesus is not dead, but that he lives with us, in us. I'm a frog. We are so grateful for new life, for the surprise gift that God gives us of Jesus. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for eggs. And thank you for chocolate cake. And thank you for surprises. And today, thank you for the biggest surprise of all. That Jesus Christ is not dead, but is risen and with us. Amen. You can head back to your seats. And I wish that you were here with me so that we could all have chocolate cake eggs together. But maybe next year, next Easter, I can make them for everybody.
So we get another surprise this morning. And that surprise is that God works even through Zoom. God brought Elizabeth Ferguson to us while we have been worshiping on Zoom. Until this morning at 645, we had never seen Elizabeth Ferguson in person. But I am here to tell you that she exists body, mind, and soul. And she has come to call Glade Church her family. So this morning at the sunrise service, she joined with us to become a member of the Glade family. And I think that she is on with us in my senior square. Elizabeth, are you here? There you are. So everybody see, see Elizabeth? She has on a really cool hat too. I love it. We are so grateful that Elizabeth wants to be part of this family and that we wholeheartedly embrace her as a part of our family. So let's pray together for and with Elizabeth. God, you are so good. You give us family. You give us faith family to walk with, to challenge each other, to pick each other up when we fall down. We are so grateful today, especially for Elizabeth, that you have brought her to be a part of the Glade family. May she continue to grow in love, in hope, in justice, and in joy. And as we walk this journey together, may we be support to one another in the good days and in the bad. And may we always together point toward you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Big hugs, Elizabeth. Welcome. And the voice I hear falling on. 
Let us hear God's word to us today from John chapter 20. Mary stood out near the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent down and looked into the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head and one at the foot. The angels asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replied, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they've put him. As soon as she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she replied, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you've put him and I'll go get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Ar Ar uh, aromatic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, don't hold on to me for I haven't yet gone to my father. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them I'm going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Then she told them what he said to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So this week, I got a series of pictures from Morgan and Thomas. Their family was out having adventures and flat Jesus was along for the fun. One of the pictures was entitled, Jesus Slays a Dragon. It made me smile because it took me into my imagination where dragons are real. And Jesus certainly could defeat one with both hands tied behind his back. Imagination is a wonderful and sometimes scary thing. Today, I want us to delve into our imaginations. I want us to let go of all of our adult, well-reasoned, just the facts, ma'am, side of our brains. After all, even Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. So I want us to step into possibility, the space where holy imagination holds court. 
For that is where we can find the resurrected Jesus. Mary went to the tomb that morning expecting to find, as our kids told us, the dead body of her friend, her teacher, her mentor. Because that's what any reasonable person knew would be there. A body, three days dead, wrapped in cloth, and maybe starting to stink a bit. But that's not what she found. Like the kid said, she found that huge stone rolled away from the cave, from the tomb. And along with that, she found some air. And because she was still thinking with her logical fact brain, she freaked out and ran to get some reinforcements. So then two of the disciples came to see. And maybe because they already had a heads up from Mary and while they were running to the tomb, they had some time to process Maybe they were able to crack their imaginations open just a tiny bit so that when they got to the tomb, they were able to see and believe, though they didn't really get yet what it all meant that Jesus was risen. And so they saw and they believed and they left. But Mary stuck around. And she stood there alone again. At least she thought she was alone. And she was weeping. Maybe she was weeping for all she had lost. Maybe she was weeping because she was so confused. And then... Jesus opened her imagination with one word, her name. Hearing him call her name allowed her to open herself to the Holy Spirit. It allowed her to open her mind and her heart wide enough to see that Jesus was not dead, but alive right there with her. Now, y'all, I have no idea what the resurrected Jesus looked like. I can't explain it. I can't make sense of it because there are no facts to back it up. There are no words that I can speak that will help us put all the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. But what I do know is that resurrection is true. Jesus is alive and living in and among us. You know how I know that? Because Jesus has spoken my name and opened my imagination and my heart to see it more times than I can count. And I know it because I've seen Jesus speak your names and the names of others. And I've seen you experience the realization of God's new life, of resurrection in you and in the world. And just like Mary and the disciples that day who arrived at the tomb, I'm a bit afraid. And I'm confused because I don't understand it. But I'm also excited. 
because with holy resurrection imagination guiding us, we can find the way out of pandemic world. And we can see the injustice in the world for our sisters and brothers who don't have white skin or round eyes or straight hair. And we can find ways to make that brokenness whole. And we can come to the realization that there is enough in the world for everyone. And we can quit using our own energy to hoard wealth for ourselves and instead put that energy and creativity to use so that all may have what they need. And we can take care of the environment instead of destroying it. And we can see the brokenness in our own lives without wallowing in it. And instead, move toward healing. Holy imagination takes us to new life. It brings resurrection off the pages of scripture that we read and into our lives and the world. So if people ask me, is Jesus' resurrection real? Come on. I say, oh yes. Oh yes, it is. God is living and breathing among us, challenging us to live into resurrection life where death and hatred and darkness don't get the last say. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We know that Christ is risen and bringing new life to all of us. And even in the midst of that new life, 
We know that there is still brokenness in the world. There is joy and pain. There is delight and suffering. And as a church family together, we're in it together, in the joy and the pain, in the delight and the suffering. And one of the ways that we walk together is by praying together. So are there ways that we can be praying for and with you in your journey? I'd like to ask prayers for our son, John. He's uh, having some kind of heart issues, probably inherited from his biological father. And he'll be having a uh, cath on Wednesday and probably being having an appointment and possible future surgery at UVA. So uh, this is something that's come up fairly quickly and we're not really sure what it is or or whatever, so we'd like to ask prayers for, for John and for, for the rest of his family as well. In your mercy, Lord, yeah. hear our prayers. Please keep Linda and Doug in your prayers and Drew and Allison. Thank you so much. Um, I would like you all to keep Gene in your prayers this week. On Friday, he goes in for an operation. His nerve in his right hand has dislodged itself all the way up his arm. And hopefully they will be able to put it back and he will be able to use it again. So um, just keep him in his prayer, in, his, in your prayers. Thank you. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayers. Denise got up feeling really bad this morning. She's not feeling any better yet. So yeah. we could keep her in our prayers as well. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayers. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. No, no, you go first. My friends, Ashley and Matthew, their baby, Ollie, got to um, come to the hospital near their house instead of being two hours away. And so he is right on the street now, and he got to come off oxygen this morning. So he's doing well. In your mercy, Lord. Hear our prayers and our joys. Uh, so uh, many of you know, I've been having a lot of neck and back issues. Um, I've recently, a couple of weeks ago, finally got an appointment set up with a pain and spine doctor. Um, and they were able to give me some shots in my neck. And for like two days, it seems like they were working great. I had, um, like no pain in my neck at all. And I was finally able to move around and um, like function. And then after those first two days, um, I suddenly started experiencing extremely excruciating pain in my back, but in a different place. So it's like the shots chased the pain out of my neck and it just went further down my back and then got worse. Um, the muscles in my back are clenching so hard that I had to have Phil help me back in bed on Friday and I had to miss work. Like I just couldn't even, I physically couldn't get out of bed. So, um, just prayers that this goes away. Um, my doctor did up my medication, my pain meds so that I'm able to at least, you know, get out of bed and move around my house. But, you know, this is very, very difficult and I'm getting really frustrated. So. Um, prayers that the doctors will figure out what's going on and fix it. <laughs> In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Any others?
holding all of these in the light of resurrection. Let's pray together. Risen Lord, you are making all things new. And we are so grateful for a new heaven, a new earth, a new way of thinking, a new way of being. You are creating a world where death and mourning and crying and pain will be no more. So even as we work toward that world with you, we pray for those in hospital beds, in refugee camps, in homeless shelters. We pray that guns will be hammered into plowshares and swords into pruning hooks. We pray that violence of body, mind, and soul will be banished by your light. Continue, God, to do a new thing in us, leading us out of death and into life. Renew our minds, our hearts, and our imaginations that through you, we might renew the world by living out your commandment of love as we live into your resurrection. In the name of your risen son, we pray. Amen. Sing Hosanna, everyone, for Christ is risen. Go into the world living into resurrection and go with the love of God, with the grace of Jesus Christ and with the hope of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Easter morning, sun is dawning.
love is shining bright flowers waking earth is shaking resonating life now the stone is rolled away he is risen from the dead we are Easter shadow with a candle in the window saying hope will rise again everybody hear the story case is given free all together true forever there's nowhere love can't reach so let the walls be broken down revolution all around we are Easter people now Turning power upside down in the valley of the shadow with a candle in the window saying hope will rise again. Can you feel it rising now? Springing up from the frozen ground. Can you hear? shadow with a candle in the window in the broken pieces healing in our unbelief believing saying hope will rise hope will rise again again And all the Easter people said, amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And feel free to stick around and share Easter greetings.